Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kamran. I am a PhD student. My research area in general is IoT and particularly it is for computing and machine learning. So I wanted to make a couple of videos on uh, the case studies of iFoxim that how the iFoxim works and how you can do the simulations in iFoxim. But first of all, I thought that I should discuss some basic ideas with you and that are like what is IoT, what is cloud computing, what are the different limitations of cloud computing and uh, what is for computing and how the for computing can reduce the limitations of cloud computing. So let's start with the uh, IoT. The full form of IoT is uh, Internet of Things and every device which is connected to the internet is considered as a thing, right? So now let's assume a scenario for example we have a smart car parking system in which we have deployed multiple cameras or multiple sensors to detect the availability of parking slots like either the parking slot is free or occupied so these sensors or cameras they are connected with the internet and they share or receive some data from the internet so all these sensors all these cameras in case they are the things so so all these things they make a interconnected network and it is called internet of things right and the processing and the storage capability of the iot devices is very limited so now you can imagine that how much uh, a sensor can process its data right it cannot process its, its data or store, store the data because the storage and processing capability is very limited. So for processing or for storage, we need some devices where we can send our data, we can process our data, we can get the insights from our data. So for that purpose, researchers and the industry use the cloud computing previously, as you all know the cloud servers are used to process your data and used to store your data for the long term because they have the heavy processing capability and all that right? and now the number of iot devices are increasing day by day and like after some years we will have like billion of devices 6 billion or 7 billion iot devices cloud servers will not be able to process the data of all these iot devices because if multiple iot devices they send their data to a single cloud server like for example the hundred of thousand of devices they send the data to the cloud server uh, for processing so ultimately it will create a long queue of uh, of the request which will which will result in the network congestion and it will ultimately uh, cause the long end-to-end -end delay for processing which we call latency and then it it can create the and uh, it will consume the large network bandwidth right so in this scenario the cloud is not suitable for uh, processing the uh, data of multiple iot devices when the enormous amount of data is sent to the cloud for processing it maintains a large queue of request right so ultimately it creates the network congestion and uh, which ultimately result in the larger end-to-end -end delay for processing and the increased network bandwidth the large end-to-end -end, uh, processing delay is called as latency so nowadays people and industries they are facing the latency network usage and energy consumption problem when they send the large amount of data for processing for or storage to the cloud server right and one more thing is that the cloud is far far away from the user or from your iot device to solve all these potential challenges of cloud computing cisco has introduced a new term which is known as for computing many people think like that the for computing is the replacement of cloud computing but uh, it's not like that the for computing will not replace the cloud computing but it is the extension of the cloud computing so fog basically is a cloud which is near to the ground or to the user but you can imagine that a fog server is a small copy of your bigger cloud server which is on the edge of the network which is very near to the user or very near to the iot devices so when 
in while you are using the cloud server you are sending your data far far away for the processing but in case of fork computing the fork node is a copy of a cloud server but it is a very near uh, to your IoT devices uh, and it can uh, handle your request at the edge of the network, right? And one more interesting property of uh, fork computing is that the fork nodes are geographically distributed. So for example, after every 100 kilometers, we can have a fork node. Uh, now I'm going to explain it in really, really simple way. So for example, there is a music company and their uh, cloud server is located in USA. So for example, you are in Pakistan and you want to access a particular song from that server. So when you make a request, so your request will first of all go to the gateway and then the uh, backbone of Pakistan server. And now like after the multiple hops, it will reach to the uh, cloud server, which is placed in USA, right? For example, if that song is popular and too many people are trying to access it, so now there would be multiple requests a large queue ultimately will result in the network congestion large end-to-end -end delay higher network bandwidth and all these problems right so now what i can do i can make the small copies of that bigger cloud server and i can deploy it into the multiple cities of pakistan and like in the other countries as well so now that fog node is the copy of that cloud server so when the user want to access that particular song so first of all that request will go to the fog server which is deployed near to your area so that fog server will take your request and if it has the copy of that song it will immediately return it to you otherwise it will take your request and it will forward your request to the cloud server which is placed in USA and then it will get the song uh, it will maintain the copy of that song and will return uh, the data to you so if another user come he want to get uh, that particular song he or she will make a request the fork node already have a copy of that so the fork node will uh, forward that copy to that user so now you can imagine that your request is not particularly going to the server which is placed in usa now your request is going to that particular server which is placed near to your geographical area so if in case that folk node does not have the copy of that song so it will take the request from you will get the song and will give back to you in a faster way right so in this way you can uh, tackle the problem of latency and higher network bandwidth usage so what are the suitable applications where we can deploy the for computing uh, every application where the latency is the biggest problem for example in the medical related fields where the delay of a couple of seconds is not bearable right so similarly uh, we can deploy the four computing in industry we can deploy the four computing in uh, coal mine industry in agriculture industry in smart car parking system in everywhere where you can think of right so uh, but the fit applications are those which are latency sensitive like the medical area like the other applications that you can think of so i have published a couple of researches in for computing i have implemented for computing in in healthcare in smart car parking system i have uh, uh, derived uh, some industrial scenarios from the ifog sim and implemented the for computing in uh, waste management system in coal mining system in agriculture next videos i will also discuss these uh, uh, published uh, research of mine so that you can get the idea that how you can actually deploy the four computing in uh, multiple fields and how you can get your results and make your work published so if you are new to my channel then don't forget to subscribe it and hit the bell icon and uh, if you really like this video then give it a thumbs up so in the next video 
I will uh, discuss one of my research paper which is towards a fog enabled efficient car parking architecture. So first of all I will explain it to you and then I will explain the code of iFoxim that how you can basically simulate that particular scenario in by, by using the iFoxim. And then we will also discuss the case studies of iFoxim as well. So thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good day.